So let's begin this evening's class with lying down in Shavasana. <clears throat> Remember if your lower back hurts, do bend the knees. And you can even bring the knees up to the chest and just open out the lower back. It's feeling a little bit iffy. And uh, do always remember, if you're lying in Shavasana and you're comfortable, move. You can always move onto your side. Or you can bend the knees. Or you can even roll over and come up. But don't stay in this if it's feeling uncomfortable. So let's just check that the body's right. We've got the palms upwards facing the ceiling. They're usually about a foot away from the hips. Let's bring that chin more towards the chest so that the back of the neck is nice and open and really letting the spine sink into the ground. Delightfully letting go. A lovely feeling of nothing to do for a moment. And as we rest here together, as a, our yoga community. Isn't it so nice to just have this perfect moment? Just being. And the body being breathed. So let's check with how the mind is doing in this moment. and see what the mind is thinking about, but our awareness is very kind and very compassionate towards the mind. Whatever ha is happening in there is for a reason. And then turning the awareness to the emotions. How are we feeling emotionally? What kind of feelings are going on in there? and see if we can acknowledge those emotional feelings with kindness. And again, they're always there for a reason. And then let's check the physical body. First of all, perhaps scan areas that you know where you hold tension. So it might be your forehead or your shoulders. But just very um, kindly moving around the body with your awareness. Letting go areas that are usually holding tight.
And then scanning, seeing any areas that have been causing a little bit of grief or been hurting or aching. And remember to be careful with those during our yoga practice. And one of the most helpful things that I was told once is if you feel a physical feeling, there's a tendency, if it's uncomfortable, to distract yourself away from it. But a really good training is to actually be completely in it, acknowledging it completely, caringly, kindly, allowing, not running away, not distracting. Simply, this is how it is. Okay, and let's turn the awareness to the breath. Noticing our breath coming in. The pause and the breath going out. And we can be aware of the breath um, as though we'd never noticed we were breathing before. And we'd never known that our body could move as we breathe. And then the mind wanders off, coming back to this breath. And I'd like you to notice now, as we come to the end of this check-in period, whether you're feeling tired at any level. And acknowledging anything you may need to do over the next few days to take good care of yourself. So here we are now aware of the breath, body, emotions, mind, where the room we're in, temperature of the air. In our own home, on our own yoga mat. Present. And let's move with that full present awareness into our practice today. So let's just bring the legs to parallel to each other and bring the toes towards you. Breathe in, arms go behind you above the head, back to the hands onto the floor. Open out the fingers and push the toes, pull the toes more towards you, push the heels more away from you. Long stretch. 
and allow that stretchy feeling to really become that full feeling throughout the body, stretching, stretching, stretching. Stretch some more, move your fingers away some more, pull in the belly button a little. And then release the hands back and let's um, bend the knees. And we're gonna roll over to the side. And we're going to come up. So a lot of classes uh, recently, we've stayed down for quite a while. But this class today, we're going to do something very conventional, which is start standing and then move to seated, lying, <clears throat> and then lying. So let's start. If you can come up nice and steady, nice and slow. you're warm enough you'll probably need to take your socks off for this work oh, just because you'll need sticky a sticky mat <clears throat> and if you were lying on a blanket you know just putting it somewhere else for a moment so last session we were working on the hips and we were working on the lower back we're going to continue that but let's start in tadasana start as a mountain. So let's bring the ankles underneath these um, hip joints here and drop the hands as though completely letting go, not holding, holding them in place, just letting them go. And turn the awareness to the ankle joint for a moment and see whether you're collapsing the ankle joint in or out. Just steadying so that you get even weight distribution through the whole of both feet, not just on the heel or the instep or the ball of the foot. So for a moment, all our awareness is in the feet. And let's imagine that those feet go deep, 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 deep into the earth. Solidly rooted like a mountain. This is Tadasana, mountain pose. And let now the crown of the head lift up through the clouds into the heavens. And then I'd like you to think of the tailbone. Just check that the tailbone, the pelvis is not pushing out backwards. Just tuck it in a little. And then without over-exaggerating, just expand between rib cage and pelvis without taking the shoulders up. So, you know, not that kind of action, but more just opening out the rib cage a bit as you stand there. Let the jaw relax. Move the chin a little up and down so that you get a feeling of the neck vertebra and you want to get a feeling that the neck vertebra at the back are just nicely settled, not compromised, not, um, not too closed at the back. And we're closing the eyes. And we're being a mountain. Now remember, you don't have to lock the knees in this. The knees can be soft. If it feels more comfortable locking the knees, do. Solid, immovable, unshakable mountain. And then breathing in, let's go into the forward bend. So breathing in, take the arms all the way up, and the palms facing away from you. As you're up there, keep breathing, but expand again, lift your uh, rib cage away from your pelvis, steady your feet out. And I'd like you to imagine that you've got your rib cage as high up as it can go. And then as we breathe out, 
over. Okay, it's about halfway. Then tuck the chin into the chest, bend the knees a little, breathe out, down we go. So you can hold on to wherever you hands meet your legs. You may not get all the way down to the floor. And then when you're in the pose, in the forward bend, lock, <coughs> lock the base lock if you can. So just lifting up the base lock, all the banda. The lower back's out Then the knees some more if your lower back hurts, yeah? Or go up higher, they'll, they'll go down so low. So we've got chin lock and base lock. And as Bill was saying, he's got lower back problems. So you can always bend the knees like this, Bill, and you can rest your elbows on, on the knees. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and then you can tuck the chin in. So you're, do you're doing um, an adapted forward bend. And remember, forward bends are really good for lifting the mood. Um, they're very good for being reassuring, all the forward bends are soothing, re reassuring, calming. But don't ever feel you need to lock the knees in this one because it places an enormous strain on the lower back. So keeping the knees soft, just breathing into it. Letting the head hang like a really heavy weight. Okay. And then let's bend the knees further as though we're sitting on a stool behind us. Bring the hands onto the knees and push coming up. Now we're using the thighs here. So push and come up, open up all the way up and a stretch, okay, and look up to the ceiling and imagine you're really trying to reach to touch the ceiling. And some of my classes, some of my students are so tall, they, they wouldn't touch the ceiling. But for me, ceilings are usually, generally, a long way up, way beyond my reach. Okay, and then Breathing out, bringing the hands down and widening the feet as we do so. And then placing the hands into the lower back so the middle fingers can touch into the uh, little sacroiliac joints here. And then I'll do it sideways on so you can see. So the feet are wider, we're just going to do the back arch backwards. Okay, and you can let the head rest on the top of the back on your kind of shoulder muscles. Opening out the throat. Now, if you feel dizzy at all, you can come out of the pose. But it's quite normal to feel a little bit lightheaded in this one. Breathing. Okay, and then to come out of this pose, push your tailbone back behind you and bring your torso to horizontal to the floor. Sweep the hands down the legs. Okay, and bend the knees. So again, sort of squatting, but it's a nice relaxed forward bend, wide legs. And then bend the knees further, come all the way up. And lift up again, right up towards the heavens, trying to touch the ceiling. And breathe. So if you have low blood pressure, this can make you feel slightly dizzy. So make sure that there's um, your sofa or, your, or a wall nearby that you can just lean on if you feel a little bit lightheaded. And then breathing out once again into the lower back, hands into the lower back. And Back we go. Nice back bend. 
opening. Think of the throat area, think of the shoulders not tied up to the ears. Throat area opening. Okay, and come out, bend the knees. And again, bring the torso to about um, horizontal again and just rub into your lower back area. And then sweep the hands up and down the backs of the legs. <clears throat> and then flop the hands forward, doing the floppy forward bend. And the knees further, sitting on an imaginary stool. And then up we come. Okay. Got any questions or you're not, you need adaptations, do unmute and ask. So um, let's just spread the legs out a bit more for a moment. Okay. And I just want you to let the legs follow you as you do these gentle standing twists. So let the head go right round. That feels a bit fast, slow it down. But do let the, the feet follow them so that the knee isn't compromised. Can you see? And then the next one, stay in it. So a full twist and look round as much as you can. And then breathing out, come around to the other side. Okay, and that same amount of time, both sides. And breathing out, coming around to the front. And we'll steadying out again, ankles under hip joint. Um, and just do the back stroke with the arms, just opening out those shoulder joints. And then forward. If you want to, you can separate the feet a bit more if you feel a bit unsteady. Okay, and then arms out, and we'll do the twist into the shoulder joint. Okay, and then do, this is the hardest one, is doing the little circles. Okay. And then the other way. Not too big, not too big, guys. Just little circles. It's actually harder doing little ones. Little ones is much harder than doing great big sweeping ones, yes. And then eventually just cross. Okay, and then full crosses into windmills across the front of the body. And then get away with the arms. Good, and then up to uh, shoulder level, leveling out, palms facing down, out, down, up. It's kind of the robotic arm movement. Trying to keep the, your upper arm parallel to the floor. Not easy. It's probably beginning to ache rather. Well, my shoulder trying to, left shoulder trying to click a bit. Okay. And release. 
Okay, and then just throw out the fingers a bit. And then round, forearms round each other and round the other way. Good, and we're going to go into the tree, Rukhsasana. So I would like you to place most of your weight into your right foot. Feel that you've really pushed down into your right foot. Um, choose a spot on the floor about eight feet in front of you that you're going to look at. That'll help you steady. And if you know you're very unsteady, make sure that there's a wall or something or something nearby that you can place your weight on if you feel you're going to become very unbalanced. So we're placing all that weight through our right foot, lifting up our left foot and seeing if we can position it somewhere on the other leg. If it won't stay at the thigh, it might stay at the knee joint or lower leg or even foot. Okay, remember it's not competitive here. You don't have to do it perfectly. So, first of all, we're in a spreading oak tree and then turn the palms upwards and see if we can go into the fall tree. And you'll feel your right ankle working. And you're looking at a fixed point. Keep breathing. If you need to come out, do have a rest and try again. Okay, and then breathing out, coming down, releasing the foot all the way down. Hands at heart position, just pausing for a moment, close the eyes. And then release the hands. Going back into the tree, uh, into, sorry, the mountain for a moment, just to steady out. And relaxing. So we'll feel that the right leg has really worked hard there. And now we'll swap the weight going through into the left foot. So bringing the right foot up, trying to find if there's some place it can sit on the thigh. Going into the spreading tree and eventually up into the fall tree. And remember, you can do this with your back against a wall if it helps. And you can also do it lying down. Supine tree. Dead tree. Dead tree or supine tree. And breathing out and coming down. Lowering the hands, shaking. And steady, breathe. And just go into the mountain again, close the eyes. Nice and steady. Feel rooted into the earth. And you might feel that the left leg really had to work there. And see if you can get even weight distribution through both feet. Okay, and then let's go into Chukula Asana, the three angled pose. Try is. Uh, three and Kona is an angle. So let's step the left foot back and right foot facing, say that's 12 o'clock, the end of your mat, facing along the end of your mat. And just get a sense of lining the back of this heel up with the beginning of the instep in your left foot. Uh, and remember the gap is probably your leg length apart, your feet are your leg length apart. Okay. 
And then can you just bend that front knee for a moment and let it travel across your second toe, the one next to your big toe. And when you do that, you get a sense of where your hips are. So um, you know this one where if your knees were traveling in the wrong direction, you would have your pelvis parallel to the wall. But when the knee actually travels over that second toe, the pelvis is at a slight angle. And that's where we want it to not compromise the knee joint. So breathing in, let's take the arms up and extend out from the shoulders. Okay, the front knee is now straight. And just check it. Anytime you can check it, is it traveling in the right direction? Yes. And then lift the rib cage up away from the pelvis, up and over, breathing out, going down and touching the front shin or ankle or down towards the floor. And the other hand goes up. Okay, so technically both legs are straight, but they you can adapt to the pose, and we're looking up to the heavens following the top arm and breathing into it. Okay, and come out of the pose, bend your front knee, bring your top hand down to your hip. Your right elbow rests on your bent right knee, then push to come up and turn the feet. And we'll do the opposite way. So you've got your left foot now facing 12 o'clock over the other end of the mat. Your back foot is coming in probably about pointing to two o'clock. Just check that your feet are in the right alignment, that the midpoint here on your left heel is in line with where your instep belongs on your back foot, your mid foot. And uh, also that you've got the gap right about your leg length apart. So let's bend that front knee a moment and check our pelvis that it's in the right position. Knees traveling over that second toe. Good, right position for the pelvis. Breathe in with the arms, lift them up and extend. Breathe out, breathe in again, lift the rib cage up away from the pelvis. But you could probably do with being wider in the feet, wider apart. And breathing out, going down. Okay, comfortably. Remember, it's not competitive. And breathing into it. Trying to look upward to the ceiling if you can. Do come out to the pose if you really need to. Okay, and then to come out of it, bend that front knee. Place the hand on the knee, pushing to come up. Bring the feet facing forward, and heel toe, heel toe in to the centre. And then just shake out the legs and arms a little. So Chikino Asana, even though it's considered one of the um, basic and primary poses of yoga. And that three-angle pose, as you probably know by now, is quite strenuous to do. Um, and you can also make it even stronger by going into, say, um, Theta Trikuna Asana. When you're over, you take the arm right over and look up through the upper arm. So that's a choice you can do. But always come out of it carefully if you can. Okay, so back into Tadasana, standing nice and steady as a mantle. Adjust weight distribution through the feet, so they even weight. A 
just check that your tailbone isn't sticking out too much behind you, tuck it in slightly. Check your shoulders are creeping up towards the ears. Let the hands just drop. And check that your feet are very much under your joint where your femur goes into the socket. So let's do some heart work. Breathing in, take the hands all the way up. Breathing out, coming down to the heart with the palms together. Breathing in, opening the hands, receiving. And breathing out, pushing the hands out. Breathe in, opening. And then breathing out, making the palms active. So they were pushing forward. And then ending by palms upwards, breathing in. And breathing out. And we repeat that, so breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, receiving that love and care in the universe for you. And breathing out, sending it either to yourself, imagine yourself there or another. And then breathing in, opening wide, receiving again. And then breathing out, sending kindness and care to all including yourself. And then on the next in-breath, the arms come up. And breathing out, coming down. Okay, we'll do the last one in silence. So breathing in. back into the mountain, nice and steady. So I'd just like you to check while you're standing there, how is your lower back feeling and how are your hips doing? So I'm now going to make the mountain slightly move. Okay, you can put your hands on the hips. And how does that feel in the lower back? On the hips. Might be a bit owy. It's a really good way to know if there's an ouch in your lower back. Okay, and then backwards and forwards for a moment. And we're going to move into the pose of courage and strength and invincibility. We're going to do the warrior Virabhadra dressing up. So just shake out the arms and remember that pose is about being really strong, not necessarily fierce, just strong. Um, so again, we're going to start with the right foot. So this time I want you to go longer than your leg length apart. So really take that right foot well away from the back foot. It's always easier the wider you can do, okay? And then again, check back of the heel to where the instep starts on your back foot. So these two places are, are in line along your mat. Um, your back toes are coming in slightly. Let's check that knee again this time. Is it going in the direction of that second toe? We don't want it traveling in any other direction, swimming around. Okay, and then breathing in, take the arms up. Bend that front knee over that second toe. Hopefully until this thigh, becomes more or less parallel to the floor. And then look along the front arm into infinity. Tuck the tailbone under a little. 
If you can do Mula Banda, the base lock, please do. And the crown of the head lifts to the heavens. So really breathing into the pose, invincible, strong, unshakable. So I think I told you before, uh, minimum is 15 to 30 seconds in the pose, unless you're uncomfortable. And maximum, so the text says, three hours. <laughs> Which I've never tried to attempt. Okay, probably had enough. So push through that front leg. Breathe out, release the hands. If you feel you can go straight into the pose on the other side too, otherwise heel toe, heel toe, your feet together and shake them out for a moment before you do the other side. But now it's the left side, left foot. So check left foot in orientation to the back right foot. Check that you're wide enough. Okay. Then that front knee. Yeah. Breathing in, take the hands up. Check that the level there should be parallel to the floor. And that the back hand, which tends to trouble, is actually in line with the back leg. Directly above the back leg. Breathing out, let's go down. That knee travels over that second toe. Towards, sorry, not over, towards that second toe. Tuck the tailbone under a bit. Mula Bandha, if you can do it. And then looking along the arm into infinity. Fierce, strong, invincible warrior. Breathing into the pose, drop the shoulders. Check that you are looking into infinity. And then eventually it will start to feel a bit much. So straightening that front leg, breathing out, bringing the hands down, turning the feet and heel toe, heel toe together. Okay, and then just slightly shaking out the legs, shaking out the arms. Okay, and a bit of side to side, the hips, and then the circles again. So where the femur goes into the socket, and the straight toe seam. And I strongly suspect that you're all thinking we've done so much standing. We've got one more standing to do. So rotate through the hands into the shoulder joint. However you like to do that, just getting that shoulder joint a bit more lubricated. And then we're going to do a pose that we were doing the last session, which is where we lift up the back foot and you can hold on to the wall to do this. Okay. A strong pose. Quite okay to hold onto a wall or an armchair or whatever's near you in your room. But eventually, if we can have the hand forward and look up, not easy. You may only be able to do it for a little bit of time. It's really helping the lower back and the hip together. Yeah. Okay. Good, releasing down, let's do the other side. So you're bringing the, the leg up and back. 
opposite arm forward, looking forward, slightly up. It's one of the uh, strong standing poses, part of the hero poses. Okay, and when you've had enough releasing and shaking out, not my favorite pose, it's tricky, it requires balance and it requires um, the ability to really uh, stay in a pose when you're feeling really wobbly, um, just uh, keeping that front arm nice and steady. Okay, good, that's our last standing pose. Um, so coming down to seated, So if you can sit cross-legged, do, but remember if sitting cross-legged is hard, do put cushions underneath the knees, okay? So I'm sitting with my right ankle in front of my, at the front, in front of my left ankle, which is tucked in behind. If you need to, you might need a small block uh, underneath your seat. That always helps, or a large block or a cushion. And then rolling the shoulders back, we're sitting in what's called easy sukhasana, uh, an easy cross-legged pose. Now remember, you don't have to do this. A lot of people have problems with their knee joints and they can sit opening the legs out or opening one side out so that they're not sitting there going, oh my God, this hurts it's so awful. Remember to be so kind to your body and listen and adapt. So lift from the crown of the head, if you can, and bring the chin slightly down. Let the palms just rest on the knees, palms downwards. If you want to do a mudra, gan mudra is good, where the, fi the um, index finger joins the top of the thumb to make a circle, like so. And then you position the fingers over the knee. So just breathing into that pose for a moment. Letting the hands be really heavy. The arms are really, you're letting go of them completely. Let go of any tension in the face and the jaw. And the tongue drops down to the base of the mouth. Okay, and then we're going to do um, some side work in that pose. So placing the right hand down onto the floor behind the knee. Left hand comes up and we go over. So eventually you can get the forearm down onto the floor, but hopefully keeping both knees towards the floor. So really stretching the left side of the body and breathing into it. You might feel as though you're pushing the left part of your pelvis downwards to keep in the pose. Um, that's good. Breathing into it. Try not to collapse the left shoulder forward. It's in line and it's back as though both shoulders were against an imaginary wall behind you. They were touching. Lovely. Okay. And then push with your right hand. Come up. Both hands up, palms facing each other. And we'll go over to the other side. So it's the left hand comes down, it slides along or run onto the floor. You probably find one side easier than the other. And then the right hand comes over the head past the ears. So you keep encouraging your right knee to go towards the floor. Breathing into the pose. Okay, and breathing in, coming up, arms facing each other. Okay, breathing out and down. Rotate a little into the shoulder joint and swap your feet. So your left foot now goes onto the outside. And your right foot is tucked in. 
If you want to, you can lean forward and pull back your sitting muscles so that you're nice and steady in your seat. And then again, Yam Mudra. Placed over the knees and just pause for a moment. Nothing to do. And then with this left foot forward, we'll start on the left side. So the left hand goes down, slides along the floor, right hand comes up and over. We're doing the same again, but we just got different foot position. We're really encouraging the right um, seat, right buttock to go towards the floor as you're leaning over to your left, encouraging a long stretch down the right flank of your also, breathing into it. Okay, and then breathing in, coming up. And breathing out, going down the other side. So right hand down, slide the forearm along the floor. Top left hand, arm goes over the head. Try not to let that shoulder come forward at all. And encourage the left pelvis, left seat down towards the floor. Breathing in, take your left hand up to the heavens, push with the right hand, up you come, breathe in, both arms up, palms together, breathe out, hand down, and just pause there for a moment, you can close the eyes, make sure the shoulders are down, and they're backwards, they're not kind of rolling forwards. You're bringing the shoulder blades a little bit together at the back. And then release the hands and let's just go into the cobbler for a moment. So for Bandhasana, where we bring both soles of the feet together in front of us if we can. And you can do the butterfly, it's good for the hips, just moving the knees up and up, up and down. Okay. If you want to, you can hold onto the toes, or you can keep the hands at the heart in a namaste position. But try to keep the spine as upright as possible. I'm seeing this gentle butterfly to open and release in the hip area. And then pausing still into the full cobbler. Crown of the head lifting, back of the neck open. Breathing into it. And with the inner awareness, just see if you can release the legs a bit more. Knees down towards the ground a bit more. And also being aware of the front of the knee joint, if there's pressure somewhere. You can always push your feet slightly more forward, eases off the pressure on the front of the knee joint. OK, 
Okay, good. And then let's just do the caps so that we've got a nice bit of supple lower back work done. So coming into the, um, the very precise table where the wrists are underneath the shoulder joints and the knees underneath the hip joints. Steadying out, checking that the feet are similar distance apart. Just have a look through and see that, the, that your lower legs are parallel. And then as we breathe in, we look up to the heavens and um, we take the tailbone up to the heavens. So we make this hammock shape. Hammock shape. And breathing out, go into bridge. Tucking the tailbone under, chin to chest. And just keep doing that for a while. And think of all those vertebrae along your neck and spinal column. And you're really moving vertebra and discs. <clears throat> nice ripple from the tailbone to the vertebra just connecting into the skull. Okay, and then the next time you're looking up, just stay in the pose in the hammock shape, breathing into it. If your wrists are complaining, you can always go on to fists instead. So you don't have that tight angle on to hand going through the wrist. But try to um, exaggerate this hammock now a little bit more. And then on the next out breath, let's go into the bridge, tuck the chin right in. Opening up shoulder blades. Pushing the mid part of the spine up towards the ceiling. Okay, and then coming out of it, going to flat table again, and just bring the big toes together at the back as you move the knees wider away from each other, and then sitting back towards the heels, lowering the head down towards the floor, and walk your fingers away into a nice swan pose or rabbit pose, releasing and letting go once you've got your fingers well away from your head, walking away from your head, and then let go of the arms. Breathe into the pose. And if you're someone who has trouble with the wrists, you can actually, at this point, rotate the wrists a bit, work your hands and wrists as you're resting the spine. Stretching and lengthening the spine and moving the wrists. But if you were doing that, ending with a, um, the, the flat palm of the hand onto the floor, the middle fingers parallel, really long, long arms stretching away from the torso. Okay, I'm coming back into the table again and we'll just do what we were doing last session which was um lifting up with one leg when you go into the hammock and then right through knee to forehead so i'm doing the right leg first so you're breathing out knee to forehead and you're breathing in as you look up <coughs> try to keep the pelvis level 
hardest thing to do in this one is to keep the pelvis level parallel to the floor throughout. So this is helping your hip and your lower back. And I would recommend doing about 10 of those repetitions, eventually pausing. You could tuck the toes under for a moment, just in case you've got crump in the foot. Before you flatten them, and we'll do the other side, the left foot going back, breathing in, picking up, and then breathing out, knees to forehead. And then when you've got to about 10 repetitions, you can place one fist on top of the other and just rest your forehead on your fist with your knees quite wide and your big toes touching. Pausing for a moment, dropping shoulders downwards, breathing, nice and steady. Okay, and then bringing the knees a bit more together, forehead on the floor and the hands back by the ankles, palms upwards into Balasana, the child pose. Pose of safety, security, soothing, calming, resting. Allowing the shoulder blades to be very wide apart. The shoulders dropping towards the ground. Nothing to do, just breathing, resting. Okay, and then just think about this first because you'll need some padding for your head. We're going to roll onto the crown of the head. So maybe have a look around, see if there's anything nearby that can just cushion your head a little. So you go onto the crown of the head, put the hands clasped, familiar clasped behind you, and up. So the hands, hands, palms downwards either side of the head, just rest there for a moment, resting on the forehead. Slide the hands back again to the ankles, palms upwards. And we're going to do that pose again, but with the unfamiliar clasp. So just pause and rest for a moment. These rests are not only nice, but important and the body to readjust. So we clasp as normal into the familiar clasp and then notch the fingers down 
to the next thing again. That's the weirdly feeling. I'm familiar class. Um, up onto the crown of the head. Arms up. And then breathing out, coming down with the hands to either side of the head, palms downwards, pushing to bring the head up. Pausing in the kneeling pose where the hands are resting on the thighs, palms downwards, and the crown of the head up. So you might feel a little bit lightheaded. Pausing there for a moment. So this is the easy kneeling pose. Okay, and then coming out of the pose just for a moment, I'd just like you to sit comfortably while we do some breathing work. You might want to put your socks on if you can find them. You can also sit on a chair if you want to. So um, choosing comfortable, basically it's just important to have a comfortable position sitting in a chair. You could even just about do this lying down, kneeling, sitting cross-legged, sitting up on several blocks. As long as the spine is in a straight line. Um, and when we're really working deeply with Panayama, we do like the spine to be upright, so we can't lie down for the strong work. But we're doing a simple square pranayama today. So I'd like you to breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. Okay, so breathing in, hold, breathing out, hold. Then for four. So continue.
So we're doing two more rounds of that breathing. And then release, sitting at the moment, normal breathing. And then I'd like you to think about how to make yourself comfy for the final relaxation. So you can have a blanket beneath you on your mat, It'd be nice, and a blanket over you. You could turn your main lights off, have a small light maybe on. If you have an eye pillow, have that near to hand so you can place it on yourself. If you want to put your, um, a top layer or a sweater on too. So slowly getting ready, there aren't any fast movements for the final corpse pose, the Shavasana. And do make yourself as cosy as you can. So chin slightly towards the chest, shoulder blades wide, hands by the sides, palms upwards, shoulders away from the ears, feet about two feet apart from each other, toes going out to the sides. And let's imagine that the weight of the body becomes really heavy and drops into soft earth as you let it go making any small adjustments you need to as we begin to settle into the pose as comfortably as possible. And if it helps, you can imagine that you've wrapped yourself in your blankets of gentleness and kindness tenderness and caring. Letting go completely. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go, just being.
And if you find the mind wandering off, as it has a tendency to do, just gently come back to awareness of the body. Scanning around the body, noticing how it feels. So eventually it feels as though the body is able to absorb 
the changes and restorative nature of the poses and the breathing work that we've been doing. And if you feel very comfortable lying there, because you're at home, you don't have to get up, you don't have to uh, sit up even, you can stay exactly where you are, as I am in the class. For those who do want to move, just start to wiggle your fingers and toes a little, so it's not too much of a shock to the body. And then very slowly, you can bring your legs to straight and breathe in, stretch the arms behind you or up to the ceiling. And really stretch, open up. And when you're ready, bend the knees and roll over and come up. And that's the end of the class. So may your week go well. May your practice be replenishing and restorative. Thank you.